Hey, uh, my name's Meg. Um, I write a blog called My Grandma's Recipes, and one of the most popular recipes that I have ever posted on there is for my Grandma Sarah's Butter Brickle. Um, some people call it English toffee. It's a, um, it's a candy, and it's simple. It's four ingredients. It's butter, brown sugar, vanilla, and almonds and chocolate chips that's five ingredients but that's all it is and it's really easy to make um but it isn't easy to make there are some tricks that you have to know and that's what i am going to show you so let's get started <laughs> cool. the oven's up to temperature <laughs> So I am toasting the sliced almonds because they, it gives it a, a sort of a nutty, almonds are nuts, but it gives them a nutty flavor. Um, in my grandma's recipe, she didn't toast the almonds, she just used sliced almonds and crumbled them, but it occurred to me recently that it might up the, uh, up the ante a little bit if I toasted them. So they're in a 350 degree oven uh, on a, a single layer in a foil pan and I'm gonna watch them real closely because nuts have fat and they can, they can burn, they'll get too brown too fast. So you have to really watch them. And it smells toasted right now. Look at that. It's definitely brown. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it. That was four and a half minutes at 350 degrees and they're just brown enough. That's perfect. So these, we're in the oven for between four and five minutes at 350 degrees. They're nice and brown and toasty. We need to wait for them to cool and then we're gonna crush them into little bits. This is about a cup of almonds. They're cooled now and I'm just gonna crumble them in my hands and line the pan with them. Um, about half of these are gonna go on the bottom. Grandma Sarah's original recipe called for about a third of a cup of almonds, and I double it. I mean, I think I did a cup here um, because it's the nuts, especially when they're toasted, just make this, just make the flavor pop. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, the first thing you need is a cup of butter, which is two sticks, and I'm using salted butter. I think it's from Costco. Um, and you need to start melting it. So I'm gonna turn this gas burner on to medium. I'm gonna turn it on to medium. And then I'm gonna dump in a cup of brown sugar. This is light brown sugar. Um, you're supposed to pack it into the cup. Um, I don't know why that is, but that's what all the recipes say, so that's what I did. So in it goes. And it's gonna melt together. And once it starts to really melt, we're gonna stir it. And then the last thing is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Use the real stuff. Use real vanilla extract. Don't use imitation. I don't even know what's in that. So here's a generous teaspoon, because if the little's good, more must be better. And then we're gonna get grandma's lucky spoon. This actually was a wooden spoon that belonged to my other grandma, not the grandma of the butter brickle recipe, but when I want things to turn out good, I'll use this wooden spoon. While we're waiting for it to melt, you need a candy thermometer. You don't need a candy thermometer. You Once you do this a few times, you'll, you'll understand, you'll watch the liquid, and you'll know when it's time to take it out. And there's a way to test it without one, but you're gonna be much better off if you have one. Not an instant read meat thermometer, it has to be this candy kind. Anytime you mix butter and sugar together and add a little vanilla, good things happen. Cookies happen, cake happens, candy happens. This is basically, a, it's like a caramel. What else can I tell you about this? This recipe um, was something that my grandma made every Christmas especially. She, I don't recall. 
recall her making it outside of uh, the holiday season, but she would make it and she would put it in a special piece of crockery. And it was one of the sort of grab bag gifts. We did like a white elephant gift exchange at our family Christmas gathering. And it was much sought after and coveted. Um, and one year I won it and I was very thrilled about that. This. We called it the we called it the Beaver Hoover reunion because that was the, the names of the two families. But she would have this crockery made by does it even say? It was a local um, in Newport, Pennsylvania, I think, somewhere up there. Uh, was this place, and she would have a piece of, of crockery made every year. And this was as much the gift as what was in it. But but being honest, we all kind of fought over the candy. How are we doing here? Okay, it's the butter's almost melted, and you can hear that it's starting to it's starting to boil. You can hear it on the bottom, and it's you see it's the liquid is sort of thinned. We're three and a half minutes in. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit more, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna say medium high. That, of course, is gonna be something different on my stove from yours, so know your stove and learn um, learn how this mixture behaves so you can adjust the heat accordingly. You don't wanna burn it. Burning is bad. Uh, you have to keep stirring it constantly, but not too constantly, because otherwise it'll never come up to temperature. Oh, look at it, it's almost foamy. It's almost foamy. We're two and a half minutes in. So it sits at a certain temperature for a long time and then it shoots up. And what you are aiming for is called the hard crack stage. And I realize that my inner 14 year old boy giggles every time I say that. Um, it's just a little hotter than the soft crack stage. Um, but it's an, it, it describes what happens to the sugar mixture when you immediately cool it. Um, it's marked on here. There's a firm ball, soft ball, firm ball, hard ball. That's baseball, I guess. Soft crack, and it looks like it's around 280 something, and hard crack is right about at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what I'm aiming for. Um, I usually let it go just a couple degrees north just to make sure I'm it's cooked enough and what you'll see I'm gonna put this into the mixture pretty soon and what you'll see is it hangs out at a certain temperature for a really long time and then it shoots up so this used to have a clip but it broke and so we just kind of have to hold it now look at the mixture can see it's it's changing in texture it's the bubbles are kind of gone that were there before and it, but it, it is still bubbly but you can kind of see it browning and it smells really good and the temperature's shooting up so we're gonna just this is the part where you have to just you know summon all the patience that you have because there is no rushing this good thing. I think I'm gonna turn the temperature down. I'm at medium high. I think I wanna go down to maybe medium because I feel like maybe it's cooking just a little too fast. Ooh. All right, that's between medium and medium high. And I'm stirring, oh, I think I smell burnage. You can tell if, the, if it's burning, you'll smell it. You probably know what burning sugar smells like. That's what it smells like. So we are, okay, so it's hanging out at, where are we? Two, about 250, 260. I don't know if you can see, it's getting, I'll stop for a minute, it's getting brown and it's kind of changing. Now, this is a very critical stage of the cooking because sometimes it separates. Sometimes the mixture separates, and my aunt and my cousins and I are trying to figure out, we've been trying to troubleshoot it for years why it separates. Is it that content in the butter? Is it the speed at which you're cooking it? Uh, we don't know. Uh, it looks like this one's gonna hold together. A couple years ago, 
I made two batches in a row that separated. Very frustrating. I beg you not to give up when that happens because um, because it's worth the wait. It's worth the effort. Okay, look. So we're getting, it's, it's zooming up. This is the part where it zooms up. It's at 290. It's brown like toffee. Now, when you get to this stage, if you don't have a thermometer, just pay attention, you have to pay attention to how the sugar behaves because what you could do, I'm not gonna do it this time, but what you could do is drop a spoonful of this into icy cold water and it would freeze, it would immediately harden. That's why it's called hard crack. Okay, and it would be crunchy. We're right at 300. I'm going to turn off the burner, and it's, is this too hot? Yeah, okay. All right, I'm taking this out. You have to do this part promptly. I'm putting the spoon down, and I'm going to take this. So that was eight and a half minutes, and look how brown and delicious it is. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to come over here, and we're going to pour it in as thin, oh my gosh. As thin of a row, this almost burned, but it didn't. You're gonna pour it in thin, sort of sliver stripes until it all comes out of the pan. Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell it. I like it's the sugar is burning right now. And I have a, one of these offset spatulas. I'm gonna just spread it out a little and it kind of incorporates the almonds a little bit. I sprayed this pan with uh, cooking spray before I pour, I put the almonds on it and so it's kind of, you can see the toffee not wanting to stick. All right, so there's that. This is about a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Uh, I don't, this is also the first time I've ever measured. I don't like a huge layer of chocolate. I'm gonna see, yeah. Let's say three quarters of a cup. Well, all right, let's use the whole cup. It's about half a bag. I like a half a regular size bag. And now we're gonna wait a few minutes for the chocolate chips to melt and then we're gonna spread them. But that means I have to wash this. Are these melted enough? You can see they kind of look melted. Some of them are glossy. Let's see what happens if we try to spread it. Uh, look, so do you see the toffee moving a little bit? That's okay. What you want to do is spread the chocolate. And by the way, if you just have like a chocolate bar that you want to grate, I'm sure that would work too. Don't go to the store and buy a bag of chocolate chips if you have other chocolate. Um, but now here's a variation that I just learned of from a from a cousin whose mother was my aunt on the same side of the family. Uh, her mom made it and she cooked sl uh, slivered almonds in the sugar mixture. I haven't tried it that way. This is the way I learned it, but I'm, I'm absolutely curious. Okay, so we have a very thin spreading of the chocolate. And the last thing is the rest of these nuts, the toasted almonds, crush them in your hands, evenly put them, sprinkle them over. See, I almost feel like, I almost feel like that's not quite enough almonds. I think I used a cup and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Buy, when you go to make this, buy a big bag of them. Yeah, that's enough. All right, so that was a cup of toasted almonds. You could do more if you wanted to. Um, I've also tried it with other nuts, but the, there's something about the almonds. The almonds are the best. So now it has to cool before you can break it. Um, it's winter here, and I think it's, I think it's chilly outside, so I'm gonna put it outside on my deck for a few minutes. You could put it in your refrigerator, you could put it in your freezer. Um, but it needs to cool for, I, I'll let you know how long, maybe 10 minutes or so, till everything's nice and cold, especially the chocolate, and then we break it into pieces. Oh my God, it's hot. Okay, 
I have just taken this, uh, I actually, I had started it outside, but it's not cold enough outside for this to really firm up. So I put it in the refrigerator for, I don't know, it was about 15 minutes, I think, maybe closer to 20. So let's see what happened. When you pull the foil up and you break an edge, you see the grease on the bottom, that's the corner, but look, watch. Do you hear it snapping? The, the chocolate's not quite hard enough, but look, let's look at the bottom. Let's look at a, a more of a piece in the middle. Here is a good example. So, you see the almonds in there, they sort of mixed in with the, with the sugar caramel mixture. And on the top, you have chocolate with toasty almonds. So let's taste it. You'll know you've done it right when it just snaps off like that. Ready? Okay. Oh my God, I nailed it. Okay. I don't know if you can hear the crunching. It's so good. I almost burned the sugar. It's it's browner than it usually is, but the toasted almonds make it taste like, dare I say, a Heath bar. Oh my God. So, oh, it's perfect. So, do you have chocolate on my lips? So you should try to make this um, because people love it. I call it my secret weapon because I, uh, beyond Christmas time, which everyone loves to receive it as a gift, I will make a batch and I'll take it to a housewarming or I'll take it with me when I'm meeting a new group of people or a new group of friends. And people will be like, oh, I'll just, I'll just have a little bit. I'll just have a little bit because I'm trying to watch my sugar. And then they're like, Oh, that's really good. Let me have a little bit more. And it disappears just little bit by little bit. So you're going to break it into just tiny, you know, tiny pieces like, you know, this, like that big. That's like a good bite sized piece. <laughs> that's a good piece. It's a good size. So you break it up. And you put it in a little tin. Don't put it in a Ziploc bag. That's not good. Just break it up like that. Put it in a tin, bring it to a party, and say, oh, it's just a little something I made. Just a little something I made for you, a little family recipe. And uh, I give you permission to take full credit and, uh, and to pass it on because, because it's good and people love it. So uh, I've got a link to a blog post that I wrote a bunch of years ago about it um, is in the where is the blog post? It's in the notes. It's in the notes. And um, you should go there and look. It's got the actual recipe. You don't even need the recipe. What you need is the technique. The recipe is easy. A cup of butter, a cup of brown sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and then like a cup each of toasted almonds and chocolate chips. Like, that's easy. Um, you need the technique. So try it. Don't beat yourself up if it separates. That happens. Um, but try to make it and uh, feel free to pass it off as your own. This is the part in the video where I'm supposed to say, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Um, but I'm not doing that because that's ridiculous. It's just, it's not something I'm gonna do. If you make it, uh, let me know how you did, uh, how it turned out for you. Leave a comment and, uh, and I look forward to hearing from you.